Hello, everyone. Um, I want to discuss today the use of XVRL data in auditing. Uh, so just a couple of words about myself. My name is Ariel Markalevich. I'm an accounting professor at Suffolk University in Boston. Um, I've been involved in XBRL for a while, doing research and uh, exploring the, the benefits and challenges of XBRL. Um, I'm also part of uh, the Cockbench team. We're, we're working on uh, different products to uh, make use of, uh, of XBRL data. And again, as I mentioned, I, I, I want to talk more specifically about the, the potential benefits of uh, XBRL structured data in the context of auditing. The plan <clears throat> for today is to discuss uh, the use of data or the need for data uh, in auditing in the general sense, um, discuss the, the ways that XBRL helps in uh, both consuming the data but uh, also gathering the data, and I'm going to discuss a specific example uh, in which the data can be uh, used in. So in, in a very broad sense, what we do in auditing is uh, we give an opinion about the financial statements of our clients. That opinion is based on the audit procedure. Um, and the audit procedure, we, in the audit procedure, we check the financial statements of the company and, and do different things. Based on the auditing standards that the PCOB uh, has published, before the actual audit, we need to create an audit plan. The audit plan would include the areas that, uh, the, the way we're going to assess the risk and what essentially we're going to do uh, as part of the audit. As part of that audit plan, the company needs to uh, perform some analytical procedures. In the analytical procedures, essentially what the, the team does is they look at areas that are um, that require more attention, uh, or the way the PCOB wrote it, that warrant investigation. So we look at data, we analyze the data, and we essentially check for areas that are um, maybe not as normal, or abnormal may be a, a strong word, but we may look at the amounts, the ratios, the trends, different things. So. My focus is going to be on, on the analytical procedures, but that step, the analytical procedures, and other steps in the audit require data for us to analyze the, the financial statements, to analyze the transactions, and then uh, opine on them. XBRL, because of the structured uh, manner of, uh, of the data, can help us in, uh, in that procedure. When we think about XBRL, because, because it is standardized, because it is structured, it helps us to consume the data and get access to the data. In general, XBRL can help by providing access to internal data or by providing access to external data. Let's talk about internal data first. When, when we talk about internal data, the idea is that as part of the auditing process, let's say you identified an area that indeed required more attention or seemed to be um, a little off. What you could do if the company has uh, has adopted XBRL, like for example XBRL GL, you can drill down the data up to down to the transaction level and try to identify what seemed to be off in the data. My focus today is going to be on external data, and specifically what I want to talk about is the use of external data for benchmarking purposes. So the basic idea is that you take information from peers, or essentially information outside the company, and use that information to try and assess whether the company uh, whether, whether the company's data looks okay or doesn't look okay, and then obviously form your opinion as part of the audit. Now, let's focus on, on one specific question. Let's say you're trying to investigate whether the inventory that was reported by the company is a cause for concern. So what companies would typically do, or what auditors, I should say, typically do, is they would look at the value and compare it to a previous period. 
what I'm offering or the focus of, 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 uh, of what I'm trying to, to talk about is potentially beyond that comparison to previous periods, it would be interesting or it could be interesting to look at the client's peers and see what happened to their inventory. And then as a final step, to look at whether the inventory that was reported by our, our client is an extreme value that is cause for potential risk or concern and require more attention, or it's not the case. So for this example, let's say I'm looking at Caterpillar's inventory. And the first step would be to pull up their information and compare it to previous periods. So here, circled in red, you can see this is actually a screenshot of, of, uh, of Incalpage. We call the, the company in detail, which allows you to trend information or to look at trend information for the company. We have information for yearly reported inventory since 2009 to 2012. And we can see that initially there was an increase of about 50 or 51% in 2009 and 2010. And that decrease was significantly smaller in um, 2012. So we can also look at these values as a percentage of total assets. So you can look at the increases. There were significant increases um, in, in, in uh, total asset values, but you can see actually that um, being starting at about 6% of, of assets uh, and I'm look, looking at 09, and you see the six billion for the uh, for inventory out of 60, which is total assets. You see a significant increase in the inventory. As, again, as a percentage of assets in uh, in total dollar value. Now that necessarily by itself is not cause for concern because maybe the, there are very good reason why the company is holding more inventory than it held before. So one thing that we could do is compare Caterpillar's uh, inventory levels to one of their peers, and I chose uh, Deer, and obviously you, you can choose something else, but for in our case, you can also examine the inventory over the, 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 the different years starting in 09, and you see significant increases uh, in inventory as well um, in uh, during 2012, the increase is slightly larger, 18% compared to, to what we saw for Caterpillar. Um, so we also see increases in inventory. But as you can see, without getting into very specific calculations, you can see that as a percentage of assets, these levels are actually much lower than what we saw for Caterpillar. An additional thing we could do is look at the company footnotes. So again, uh, CalPinch allows you to uh, look at footnote information, actually allows you to pull uh, footnote data for, for multiple companies for multiple periods. And here we, we can see the, the footnote information for, uh, for, the, for Caterpillar. Uh, so this is uh, footnote number seven for inventories. And I'll, I'll skip you the, the trouble of reading through. Um, 2010 and 2011 have some detail about um, 2009 inventory quantities that were reduced and uh, the information on the impact on EPS and stuff like that. But you see the breakdown of inventory to raw materials, working process, finished goods, and supplies. But there's nothing that seems to be alarming or very different than the information we saw before. Again, continuing with the same idea we could look at John Deere's um, footnote information. This is footnote 15 for their inventories. And both companies are using FIFO. They have the LIFO adjustment. Nothing seems to be di very different uh, across the three years. So let's go a step further. A step further would be, instead of comparing Caterpillar to just one, um, one peer. We'd rather compare to many, to a peer group. And the difficulty now with doing that is that 
that's very time consuming because it takes a while to gather the data and compare the data and, and, and prepare it for, um, uh, for comparison. The idea is uh, that in many cases you would need to standardize the data. And I've chosen, um, uh, obviously, a, a slightly easier example in the case of inventory. But this is a screenshot of uh, what we call our analytical tool. So in Calcumins you can create a peer group. So the peer group would allow you to choose the companies that you think are peers uh, to, the, to the company of interest. And um, it may be based on industry, it may be based on a certain index, or whatever the case may be. And this is the, uh, in the back you see the full page, but because the, the numbers are small, I, I enhance or enlarge uh, uh, a portion of it, a, a portion of interest. So looking at the page at the back, you see the different accounts, the different income statement and balance sheet accounts. You see the value. You see the year-over-year -year change. And then we move to the common size financials. So we have the, the, different, um, the different values as a percentage of either revenues for income statement accounts or assets for balance sheet accounts. We see the peer group mean and median. And finally, the percentile rank. So the percentile rank shows you where in the distribution of peers your client lies or the, 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 the specific data of the account lies. So again, focusing on the inventory, we saw that the year-over-year -year change 7%. We saw that before. As a percentage of total assets, we're talking about 17.4%. And based on the mean and median, again, the mean being 15.43, the median being 12.76, we can see that we're obviously above the mean and the median. So this is higher than uh, most, of the <clears throat> most of the companies in the peer group. And you see the 66. So this company, the inventory for Caterpillar, lies in the 66th percentile of the peer group. Some auditors, some people investigating the company may decide that this 66th percentile is a high percentile, hence the, the inventory accounts warrants more investigation, whether this is for auditing purposes or business purposes, uh, you may decide that this information leads you to believe that the inventory is too high, or you may decide that 66% is not high enough, but rather you want to focus on the 90th percentile and above, or the 80th percentile or above, or whatever the case may be. Just for comparison purposes, we can look at the same analytical page for DEER. Here you can see I'm focusing on the, on the large component. So inventory, which is $5 billion, increased by 18%. Uh, since last year, which is a significant increase, mu uh, much more than almost the 7% that we saw for Caterpillar. As a percentage of assets, though, we're talking about 9%, which is way below the mean and median values, again, the 15.43 and the 12.76, and we see the percentile rank of 36%. Now, you can use this data, manipulate it further, investigate it further. One of the things that, uh, that we like to show is a visual representation. So I don't know if you noticed before, but there was an option to chart each of the accounts. And the chart essentially shows you the distribution of firms within the peer, the peer group, the distribution of values for firms in the peer group. And since the, the peer group can in theory, be many hundreds of firms, we sample it in such a way that it won't overcrowd the, the chart, but it, it represents the entire distribution. So you see the average and uh, median lines. You see Caterpillar, which is our company of interest, is in yellow compared to uh, the, the rest of the, the peer group. And the red circles are mine one may think that these are areas that require more attention. So if my company or the company that I'm investigating um, 
where to lie in those areas, I may decide to investigate it further because I may think about the fact that the inventory seems too low or the inventory seems too high. Going back to what we, we started with, the idea here is that by having access to structured data, in our case XPRL, we can compare large quantities of data in a very easy way because the data is much more accessible. So XBRL, by structuring the data, by tagging the different parts of the information, um, facilitates the, the, the access to data, the use of data, as you saw before. And just to give some context, that the example that I went through was thinking about the auditors. But in similar fashion, if you wanted to investigate uh, a target for an acquisition, if you wanted to investigate um, a, a company that is about to be your vendor or is about to be your client, you can go through the same process and the, the collection of data, the analysis of data is much, much cheaper, much, much easier using tools like, um, like CalcBench and, and others um, because of the structured fashion of the data. If you want more information about these and other tools, you can find them at our, uh, at our webpage, calcbench.com, specifically for auditors. Uh, would be this web address that you see on your screen, or feel free to email me with any additional questions or thoughts that you may have. Thank you.